All right, Jake Stewart with the National Sports Media Association. Today, I'm joined by Arkansas Sportscaster of the Year, Jordan Black. Jordan, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Jake. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, I want to ask you first off, I know already that, uh, you know, you're a Tar Heel graduate from the University of North Carolina, but what made you want to work in sports? What got you into it? Yeah, it's a great question. I always wanted to be in news when I was five. I was watching the news with my mom and I was like, what's her job? And it was a news anchor and she told me she was a news anchor and that kind of solidified my desire to be in broadcast. But once I started really getting into sports, I would say like middle school and I know you can't see me, but I'm all of five foot. So I was not athletic as far as traditional sports. So I was a competitive cheerleader. Um, I, I really started learning so much about sports from my dad who would have me sit on the edge of the couch with him and call balls and strikes. And we grew up huge Florida Gator fans. So we would go to the swamp and it was in the era of Tim Tebow and the amazing Florida back to back to back championships with the basketball and the football teams. And that really helped me not only learn, but appreciate the sports um, life and college sports particularly. And then when I got into high school, I went to a very sports driven high school, St. Thomas Aquinas in Fort Lauderdale, and their football program is renowned every year. And I got to cheer for their football team there and fast forward to college. I worked for the football team at Carolina and all of those things kind of just led me into sports. And for those who know me, they'll say my personality is kind of more along the lines of sports where sports are generally positive. And so that's something I really enjoy. Not that news can't be positive as well, but sports generally give us good stories, good news, um, good, exciting things. And so I think that kind of just fits me a little bit better than news does or did. Um, and so that's kind of really where I fell in love with it. Just all, all those things leading me up into this career. I love that. And it just sounds too like you've been sur by surrounded by not just good sports, uh, but, you know, but great sports. You talked about Tim Tebow and, um, you know, your high school as well. Just being, uh, you know, able to be around that environment has really gotten you into it more. Well, I want to ask you, so this is your first award from the National Sports Media Association. W what does it mean to you to be honored and recognized? Oh, my gosh. It was such a... In I, I'm almost speechless because I remember when Dave called me. Actually, I'll back up a little bit. When I was nominated, I went on to vote for everyone like I do every year. And I'm regularly um, a member of the National Sports Media Association. And I always like to vote. And I always like to see especially how many women are nominated. And I just went to vote. And of course, Arkansas being at the top of the alphabet, um, A was at the near the top. And I I was taken aback when I saw my name. And I, I swear that's a, a genuine reaction. And I, my heart started beating really fast and I ran to my boyfriend and I was like, oh my gosh, I have no idea who nominated me. Obviously I was so, so appreciative, but really um, shocked if you could say not because I don't think that I've worked really hard in this state, but I think because there are so many incredible people, it's obviously a small lure state, but it is a state that loves its sports because we only have the Arkansas Razorbacks. We have some smaller schools, we have a minor league team, but there's no professional sports in this state. So you gotta love those hogs and, and do an unbiased job of reporting on them. And I've worked really hard to do that in just three and a half years. And so my first reaction was almost shock, but obviously complete appreciation and uh, a, a true honor that I, I will always take with me. And, something that I'm, I'm extremely proud of. And, and obviously my friends and family are as well. Um, but also just, it, it's been a, a tough year for everyone, but especially um, in my station. And so it means especially a lot this year. Well, you've been able to work very closely with the Razorbacks team that you mentioned, traveling with them and uh, reporting on them. I want to ask you, you know, for our listeners, uh, can you tell us about maybe a game or an event that really stands out to you that you've been able to cover so far? Yes. One that comes right to mind being a college football lover is my first trip to Baton Rouge this year. And Arkansas had not beaten LSU in Baton Rouge in so many years. Um, and they were able to do that not only in regulation, but overtime. So like what sports lover doesn't love a buzzer beater, a walk off or overtime. So, I mean, I'm on the sideline watching the game. I had a photographer shooting the game, but I'm, I'm getting reaction on social media and they kick a field goal to walk it off in overtime, if you will. And 
the reaction of the Arkansas players sliding in, there's a, a golden boot that they fight for to go get that and kind of running with the team to get all of that on social media was really neat. But then what's really cool about being a sports reporter is that you have to get that reaction right on air. So of course the game is going to end right at 10 o'clock when you have to go on TV. And so you have no time to go get your video together or write a script. You're just on air. And I remember one of my best friends who, who was anchoring at the time tossing to me and she was kind of giggling at the reaction because I was almost out of breath trying to recap what had happened. And so it was such a special, cool moment. You really start to fall in love with these teams when you're covering them. And it was really, really cool. Um, this team was so neat to watch this year. And also just being in a historic place like Tiger Stadium, I think was something I'll never forget. Wow, what an awesome memory and no surprise that you picked that. That's so sweet. Um, so you mentioned earlier that, you know, you've been into sports casting and following, you know, all these famous sports casters since you were little um, and getting in. I, I wanted to ask you, who were some of those uh, sports casters that you looked up to then and maybe some of the ones you look up to now? Sure. So I think some of the, the classics for women are Linda Cohn and Doris Burke because they're authentic, but also they know their stuff. And if there's anything us women in the business have to fight, if you will, it's we maybe try a little harder to make sure we know what we're talking about. Even if we know, we're, we're always trying to make sure everyone else knows that we know. Um, you and I were talking before off camera about Stuart Scott and being a Caroline alum. He's just so special to all Tar Heels, but I think to all sportscasters because he was always authentically himself. And that's something I try to be as well. Um, I never wanted to change my personality on TV and even someone who isn't quite uh, as, as famous, if you will, but where I interned in Miami, um, the sports director, Will Mann. So I always admired him and still do because when you talk to him off camera, and the way he is on camera was the same. His voice didn't change. His energy didn't change. And I just really not wanted to emulate him, but wanted to emulate that idea that you can be your same self and still tell the stories and the scores and the stories beyond the scores. Um, now I love some sideline reporters, especially Allie LaForce. I think she is a force. I think she knows her stuff. I think she tells it really well. But the people that can just kind of tell a story and captivate you are always the people that I really admire and kind of what I strive to be like. Well, obviously, you know, we were all kind of shook a year ago, especially in the sports world uh, with COVID coming in and, um, you know, all kind of just trying to figure out how to, you know, get through it and what to make of it. And, and I wanted to ask you, how much did your work change, uh, if at all, during the time? And, and what, what did you do differently? Well, there was a lot of this. But one thing I kind of tell people is I actually think this opened us up a little bit to athletes and to coaches when you're traditionally interviewing or getting sound with players and coaches right after you're almost in a scrum and you're trying everyone holding everyone's mics and um, you're, you're all trying to get your questions in. And Zoom kind of allowed us, even if it was in a group setting for a presser to ask a question where they could see our name um, if they forgot, you know, and a lot of the coaches I think know our names and, and players, but they could kind of get to know you and it, it removes that barrier a little bit versus the camera right in your face. And I think it gave us a little closer opportunity to chat with athletes and coaches. Um, and also it took the time out of it. So when a coach would say, oh, I have practice and it ends at four o'clock. Okay, are you at 4.15? Can I jump on a Zoom with you? So it kind of allowed us to do, obviously we weren't shooting as many things, but I think Zoom really helped us um, still tell stories, even during a crazy time. It also helped me kind of become more creative, whether it was finding sports in a marble, um, a guy who made marbles into contraptions and, and that was his sport. Or um, if it was, you know, just trying to tell a really, you know, empowering story, but only through photos. So I think that really tested all of our creativity. That's awesome. Well, this next one, Jordan, is kind of a fun one, but I know you're a Tar Heel graduate. So I had to ask you, you know, what kind of what, what emotions have you gone through, you know, these past couple of months, just with that run that team had? Um, obviously, you know, Hubert Davis, coach of the year, led the team. And, you know, what went through your head and, and how cool was that to be a part of? Well, for one, I so I, I think back to what I was saying, so admire Hubert Davis for being authentically himself. We saw during the national championship when Tracy Wolfson pulled him aside and he was like, this is live game action. I mean, the, you just, you, 
he's so him and he's so genuine. And I think that is so captivating to players. Um, as someone who has a background in athletic recruiting, that is what captivates 18 year olds, 17 year olds and their families to join your program. And I think he's going to be that person for a lot of students. And you have to be so competitive in this day and age with NIL and the transfer portal and all of those things. So I adore him. I think he was the right pick. Um, there's a lot of people who didn't think that. And I will be one of them to say he was the right pick because he was Roy's pick at the very beginning. But that national championship night brings me back to my senior year because Carolina lost on that buzzer beater my senior year to Villanova. And it was so sad, but you're also so proud that your team was there. Um, and I love that squad this year and the fact that they're all coming back, I cannot be more excited. Um, and I just love the direction this program is headed. So I think you always, when there's a coaching change, you wonder what's going to happen, but I think they're, they're on the up and up. Absolutely. Well, the last question I wanted to ask you, and thank you so much again, uh, for being here is, uh, you know, what advice would you give younger sports casters, you know, people just looking to get into the industry now? I would say my best advice is to follow your passion and make it happen. And I think that if you don't have passion for this, you probably won't get too far because as many people tell you, it's not very glamorous. Uh, it's not the highest paying job. You're giving up a lot to do, to do this thing. But if you're, you love it and it's your dream, like it was mine, um, you can do it. And my other piece is you just need one person to believe in you. And I, I wish I said this sooner, but my one person was my sports director in my first job in Greenville, Mississippi, market 196 or so, Stephen Robinson. And um, if you're asking about sports casters, I admire, I so admire him. His storytelling is um, beyond incredible. The way he cares about and asks questions and listens to you and finds stories and um, he is just an incredible person, um, and mentor and you just need that one person. I applied to so many jobs and I remember thinking I'll never get to do this. And once you get that one job, you are a sports anchor, you are a sports reporter, you are a sports writer, whatever it is, you just need that one person. And I think that's hard to see until it happens. Um, but then once you're in, kind of in, it's a tight knit group, be nice to everyone. You never know who's watching work so, so hard, um, work hard when no one's watching and just keep your head down. And, um, you know, there, there are nights and, and weekends because that's, that's a big part of sports and times where you're gonna miss things with your family. But if you love it, um, that, that should be enough to get you through. Um, and so you'll, you'll be part of a lot of really cool moments if it's something you're really passionate about, which, um, you know, when you asked me cool moments, I could have probably listed a lot of other ones. Um, so. It's just, if you're really passionate about it, I think that's probably the biggest thing. I love that advice from our 2021 Arkansas Sportscaster of the Year. Thank you so much again, and congratulations on your award. Uh, we hope to see you out in Winston this summer, too. Thank you. Thanks for the time and great interview. Absolutely. Thank you.